kids on the block. We here and making it pop. Don't care if you like it or not. Spot we one is the top. The head nerds in charge and I foresee to making things happen. If you think you heard what you thought you heard, go ahead and play that thing back. Coming out the speakers in the car and in the man cave. The mother bus is about to be knocked off the airwaves. So be very afraid. Better check your gameplay. Sitting on all that and finna take away your fan base. The stage is set. Better put respect up on our name. What you get right now, you get it later. Up the game. I steady dose it. Once you started, you can't get enough. The people's chant ain't a topic we ain't finna touch. So bring your A game. Cause the boys behind the mic finna do the same thing. One time for the one time, let it off like bang bang. We aiming to be the greatest. We accepting any challenge. With a snap of the finger, bring in balance. Let's make it happen. You tuned in to the place to be. You tuned in to HNIC. Head nerds in tuned in to the place to be. You tuned in to H and I see. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. There's only one boss in this place, and that's me. The H N I C. What's up, guys? It is at Tuffy Wonder here, your wonderful melanated mocha five merge on. Coming at you guys on my after hours time, bringing you another awesome, awesome Kickstarter project. And I cannot wait to show this to you guys. Um, I have the awesome uh, content creators here from Clutch, a kobold story. Um, they are live over on Kickstarter, and they're going to tell you all about their product. Um, I'm project, excuse me, I can't talk. Um, but I'm going to go around and let everybody introduce themselves, starting with uh, you, Kennedy. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> yes. So tell everybody who you are and what your role in this project is. Well, hi, uh, I'm Kennedy Phillips. Uh, I bang pots together for a living. Uh, that That's more, more specifically, I'm a sound designer. I've worked on animated projects like Has Been Hotel, Hell of a Boss, Atina, Mayhem. I'm also a sound designer for audio dramas uh, for projects like The Sojourn and Magus Elgar, which uh, is uh, actually one of my own creation. And I'm here today as the creator of Clutch a Kobold Story, a fantasy comedy about three kobolds who go on an adventure to try and find a new dragon master after they accidentally kill their old one. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> that sounds mad wild. And I love uh, a sound designer. There's a horror movie about that, about people in like a radio station. There they like oh, yeah. do like the pots and stuff like that. And there's like a killer on the loose. I think there, there's like another horror movie called Barbarian Sound Studio, which is yes, exactly that's what it my, is. Yeah, that is my nightmare because I have lived <laughs> exactly that scenario at one point in my life. Oh my god! <laughs> which, like, for those of you who don't know what Barbarian Sound Studio is, it's about a foley artist who gets hired to uh, fly to another country and is gaslit to the point of insanity. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I feel like that's everybody's worst fear. Like, if you listen, if you date men, you know that's a real thing. <laughs> well, the thing about it is, you're telling me this premise before I'm about to fly out and record for you. So now I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now if at any point I say to you, I thought you were an artist. When you ask me about pay, you have my permission to slap me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So I'm going to keep going around here, guys. Next is Michael Kovac. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, hi, my name is Michael Kovac, and I'm a voice actor um, like Kennedy. I also worked on Has Been Hotel. I'm a part of a bunch of other uh, animated projects as well as a voice actor. And uh, now I'm here on Clutch, a kobold story, as uh, Strap, who is the the leader of the group of kobolds. He's this manic, cheerful um, inventor kind of character and he's he's very cute he's a he's a cute little kobold that has a rather high pitched voice and uh <laughs> yeah he's a lot of fun he's a lot he's a lot of like he's a big um bunch of energy and uh he's just he's just a cute little guy all right next we have joanna hello hello thank you for having me on the show 
Um, I do voiceover work and uh, I actually got started during quarantine and <laughs> I think a lot of us might have actually, but uh, I've been so honored to be a part of several projects and I'm really, really stoked to be a part of this one. So I'm really looking forward to uh, how it all plays out. So I'm just really happy to be part of it. I play uh, Nam in the, in the story <laughs> and she yeah, loves uh, potions. Is... Yes. Nam is our uh, our healther as uh, or a healther basically the the healer of the party but <laughs> but by by healther we mean she drinks a lot of healing potions. I was just about to say is she the one who looks like drunk cuz she's drinking all the <laughs> <laughs> No, Listen, like that, that, if she that is no of judgment because <laughs> that is no judgment because your girl loves her libation. So snaps, <laughs> snaps. I'll tell you. And last but not least, we have the coolest mustache uh, goatee combo I think I have seen in at least the last month. Uh, LRB. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. I can I to the shadow realm. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hello. Cool <laughs> I'm LRBJ. I'm a freelance sound engineer and voice actor, lover of Discworld, haver of tea, and owner of a very terrible webcam. I'm sorry. Before I, <laughs> before I connected up with Kennedy and got to stare at his amazing light up tie, I only use this to talk with my parents on Kwanzaa. So, so, <laughs> so it's something I got from uh, from Amazon. But either way, I've been a fan of radio plays and sound-only media for a really long time. So getting to kind of uh, be in one on like uh, a professional scale with like the Kickstarter doing so well and everything is a real honor, and I'm very happy to be here. Nice, nice. So we are here to talk about um, your Kickstarter project, Kobold, which I think is the cutest stinking thing <laughs> I have seen in like quite a minute. Um. And it's about what exactly is a kobold? So let's start there. So if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons of any capacity, uh, you'll you'll remember that uh, kobolds are these very low level enemies that they usually throw at like first timer parties for adventuring. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like three feet tall. They're they're usually like these little reptilian guys that are often have like. 5 HP where you could just kill them if if you look at them hard, sternly enough um <laughs> they they they're usually known for uh following around dragons and worshiping them uh cuz they're they're under the impression that like they they have in their blood draconic uh heritage and to be surrounded by dragons is a great honor um but with our kobolds, we kind of make them as like these these really uh, uh, doofy, adorable little gremlins that just want to, they just want to be around dragons a lot. And the dragons are not entirely into it. Like, yeah, you get like free servants, but at the same time, they don't leave you alone. <laughs> um, so so in their, in their excitement, uh, the clan uh, of kobolds that these three are a part of, uh, clan, fine, you're a clan now, let me sleep. Uh, or Clan Fine for short, uh, try, try to celebrate uh, their their dragon's birthday, the benevolent Gaujinvor the Crimson. And in their attempts to uh, help him celebrate his birthday, uh, they kill him. <laughs> what? Uh, On accident. It, 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 wasn't, it was an accident. It was entirely an accident. But now, now they're like, well, um, we better find a new one. <laughs> or, or we're in trouble. <laughs> I so now, love uh, so Strap Nam and Book volunteer to go on an adventure to try and find a new dragon, uh, while the uh, dragon slayer Krillia Spine Shatter chases after them and wishes nothing but ire on all of dragon kind. Okay, all right. So mm. I do have the animation queued up that you um, sent to me, and I'm going to play that for you guys now, so you can see the short animation here from yeah, the yeah. Ain't we cute? Yeah. So adorable. <laughs> so okay. So these are our kobolds, and we've already established um, who my favorite character is, uh, sis with the beverage. <laughs> um, so but tell me. Um, so to introduce us to some of these other characters. Okay. So um, 
right now, this uh, what you're looking at right now is a, a mock-up that we had when we first initially pitched the series to the BBC. Uh -huh. um, which they, they were really, like, in love with, like, the design for the kobolds. But we were pitching to uh, Radio 4, which was uh, a little bit outside of the kind of thing that we were trying to do. Um, so on the far left, you'll see Nam the Helther, who uh, she she helps heal the party and helps heal the 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 kobolds of Clan Fine by mostly kissing boo boos and giving them healing potions. She's also <laughs> under the impression that if she drinks enough healing potions, she'll live forever. Um, it's worth a shot. I've heard people on Twitter drinking bleach for far less, uh, with far less research involved. So honestly, I'm, I'm sure you can drink healing potions <laughs> normally because healing. I, I I I'm under the impression that if you have bleach as a potion, the only magic effect that it's going to have is that it's going to create. It's going to create anti -life. problems. You, you will, you will, <laughs> you will magically transform into yes. a corpse. Uh, this um, is a disclaimer from head nerds in charge. Do not treat bleach like a health potion. <laughs> Please do not drink bleach. If that is that is a disclaimer <laughs> on this <laughs> podcast. <Tastes> good. <laughs> My plans are ruined. Bleach is the original anti-life equation. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, dark side. Next on, uh, next on the list of the of the the kobolds that you saw was uh, the the red kobold uh, Strap the Trap Maker. Uh, his job in Clan Fine is to build lots of traps to keep the soft skins or the the humans out of the lair and away from uh, uh, their their master dragon. But oftentimes he's he's testing his own traps on himself because he doesn't want to put other people in danger. And he one day wishes that he can create the fabled Seven Chain Special, a uh, chain reaction of traps uh, that is said to be one of the most legendary and difficult to attain chain reactions out there. It's also possibly because he can only count up to seven, but we're we're not sure on that. Don't <laughs> quote him on that. That sounds like some Rube Goldberg like type stuff, like just funny, like weird little things lead into little things. <laughs> that is exactly what that is. And uh, uh, last but certainly not least on uh, of our three kobolds is Book the Booker, uh, the <laughs> resident scribe and book collector of uh, Clan Fine, mostly because kobolds don't really understand about reading or books, so... The, the one kobold in Clan Fine that knows how to read, they just give him the books and, and he just reads them and, and has like his own library. But, but by library, I mean he has a bunch of piles of books all surrounded somewhere that he kind of like digs in and out of. I organize them by color. Listen, I got some friends from high school that that's what they call their uh, their library. So again, you not don't don't shame my friends out here. Like that's <laughs> so long as folks are reading, fun isn't hard yeah. when you have a library card. Listen, listen, some of us we don't just we just uh, we accumulate knowledge. We don't have to worry about organizing it. That's for other people. That's somebody else's problem. <laughs> So, okay, so these are our little, these are our friends, and they kill their master, and they're going off to find a new master. Now, typically, uh, when you kill your boss, you don't exactly, like, <laughs> go out and find a new job. So, <laughs> no, well, the, the, the big thing about, like, uh, their society is that the clan of kobolds have been living underneath uh, the benevolent Gaujinvor the Crimson. Uh, for thousands, for like hundreds and two thousands of years, and without any other societal hierarchy, they're like, well, what do we do now? Like our entire culture has been revolving around taking care of this dragon and and giving him everything that he could possibly want and more. What do we do? Uh, so they decide, well, we better replace him or, or find some other dragon that can tell us what to do, because what are we going to do by ourselves? <laughs> and it's 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 a bit of a misguided effort, but uh, an admirable one nonetheless. There's probably a dragon out there that doesn't have, like, 200-plus kobolds wanting to do everything that they <laughs> want, right? <laughs> I mean, if you say so, I'm, I, listen, if they if they really need a job, I got laundry and some dishes that can be done uh, right now. Like, uh, um, 
I'm I'm looking for some help, baby. And I'm just imagining like a little kobold maid service, and they're like, "I did all your laundry, your graciousness. You were the fire <laughs> beneath my wings. I destroyed all your dishes. Why, why That's what are you there wanted, right? Why in my shirts? <laughs> That's <laughs> not part of the procedure. <laughs> <laughs> I call it a deep cleaning. Listen, I I would. Uh, they seem cute and funny, and I listen. I got a soft spot. It's like soft spot <laughs> for that sort of thing. So I feel like I would give I would give them a chance. <laughs> well, I think you'd like them until you figure out that they get rid of stains by chewing them out of the fabric. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. We we did this because we are your holiness, and we made some holes in it to reflect. <laughs> I, I don't understand. The stain is gone. I mean, it's not there anymore. So. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm dead. Okay, so, all right. So, tell me, how did you guys get together and, like, how did you kind of, like, come up with this? Well, I, uh, the story for me is probably where it starts a bit was um, I, I was coming home from a, a trip taking care of my dad after some really serious spinal surgery. And mm -hmm. when I came through the door, all of my roommates were. Uh, babbling in really high pitched voices around our our dungeons and dragon or our under our, our tabletop uh, yeah. room, and I'm like, "What are you all doing?" And they're like, "We're playing a campaign where everyone is a kobold." And I go, "How dare you do this without me?" <laughs> <laughs> so I I had, I was so endeared by them just improving this ludicrous tale of a bunch of kobolds getting into trouble that I'm like, I kind of want to make my own story about this. Um, and I had uh, whipped up a couple of like uh, scripts and ideas for, for the show and went on to, uh, I, I went on to like castingcall.club and I asked for a couple of people like, hey, I want to make a, a proof of concept and I'm going to pitch this over to BBC to see if they like it. Um, and that's how I met Joanna, who was the first member of the team, uh, uh, where she uh, helped me create Nam in, in that setting for our proof of concept. Um, later on, uh, I ended up asking uh, Michael and Ellerby to uh, hop on as these things, because uh, Michael I had met on Hasbin Hotel, where he played as Angel Dust. And uh -huh. I've been I've been circling his a lot of the projects that he's been attached to for a while now because pretty much a lot of the people that we're connected with, uh, you've worked for at one point or another, Michael. Yeah, I, I get around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like re recently he's like been doing like murder drones. He's working on Lackadaisy. I think you're working on right now. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and okay. Michael's significant other is doing Farfetched, which uh, fun fact, oh. uh, she and her team did the animation Ooh. for for Clutch, oh, and I'm going to be working on that pretty soon. Uh, but uh, LRB was actually kind of funny because there was never a point where I did not intend to hire LRB to be on this project. Because <laughs> when I was coming oh. up with ideas for Kobolds, I ran across LRB's uh, YouTube where he does like all these like really cute uh, ASMR videos about just people who like read books to you or talk to you about stuff. And it's like very wholesome and very sweet. And I said, I want a cobalt that's just that. <laughs> and so someone asked me like, okay, so who, who are you going to hire to, to be this role? I'm like, I'm just going to ask him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything. <laughs> listen, I, listen so I that's, that's more or less how I kind of like got into like this, like this role so, right so, now. So I busted awesome. into his DMs Kool-Aid man style and said, hey, you want to be a kobold? He's like, what kind of kobold? They go, exactly what you're doing right now. Well, well I mean, like, uh, I'll see what time I have to do. It's like, no, this is a paid job. He goes, uh, what? <gasps> I get money? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Vittles for my table. Scars uh, for my neck. Okay. <laughs> So I want to back this up, like, kind of like, back it up a little bit. So, Joanna, tell me what you first thought of this project when Kennedy brought it to you and kind of like how you feel about it, like, now, because you guys are killing it over on your Kickstarter. Like, um, not I don't want people to, like, not give, so I'm not going to say, like, how much money you guys have made, but uh, y'all are doing really well. And like I said, <laughs> this is really cute. So, Joanna, tell me, like, mm. What you thought? Were you just like, "Boy, get out of my face"? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really interesting because um, Casting Call Club is, you know, it's like a free 
I guess you could call it a platform. It's a free website. Um, and so it's excellent for beginners, um, you know, if you're especially like doing voiceover and such. So uh, that's the main site I use to do my auditions. Um, and so when I when I learned about Clutch, I was like, oh, like this looks really, really cute. And of course, this was, this was before um, all the art was made for it and everything. So I had no idea what it was going to come to be. <laughs> so it's just been really surreal uh, seeing it progress. And just it's just so exciting. I'm so excited to see like how it comes to be. Uh, but the audition was like super fun. I was just kind of like, like every audition, just like kind of giving it all I got. <laughs> just like just throwing myself out there. So uh, yeah, it was just really awesome to be chosen as nom i had a lot of fun with her audition (laughs) (laughs) what i really liked about what i really liked about joanna's like audition is that so many other people that were playing as nom were doing that that voice of like a very sickly almost like diabetic quality to their their voice trying to be like so cute it actually was kind of like (sighs) sickening but joanna did this amazing thing where she had this almost frantic energy about her about her character and i loved it so much (laughs) super super high energy (laughs) (laughs) okay so joanna uh tell me one uh what qualities do you see in nam that you yourself also share and tell me like now that i i assume is the project finished like are you have you done all your parts oh no no no. that uh i i suppose uh kennedy if you would like to discuss that last part yeah so part of the kickstarter is to actually fund everything um we we had a private investor come to us to say like hey i will give you this amount of money to get this off the ground i'm like well that's that is amazing. I will absolutely accept that. That is not enough money to make this project. <laughs> uh, so he said, well, like, what can we do? It's like, well, I'm going to go and, and do a Kickstarter and see how well we can do with that. It's like, well, what do you need to make like an audio drama? Surely you could just record all this stuff in your home. And I'm like, no, because I have a studio that I can do this in for like really professional, high quality stuff where I can get these three in the same room to yap, yip yap at each other until yeah. comedy happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have a Foley stage there and I have a full mix room and like I, I expect to make this at the same kind of quality as you'd expect something in a movie theater. Um, and that doesn't come cheap. Uh, so the Kickstarter is going to fund uh, these three to uh, come to Hollywood to Melody Gun Studios to record their lines. It's also going to help me pay for my sound designers, for my composers and everything like that. They, they have not actually gotten to uh, do much other than like proof of concept videos, which you can see on mm-hmm. YouTube, by the way, absolutely free. And our Kickstarter. Um, and on our Kickstarter. Yes, and your Kickstarter. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, Wait, sorry, I interrupted you, Joanna. What? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no uh... worries. Yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, we have not done all of our parts yet. So, that is hopefully to come. We shall see. <laughs> um, so, uh, but as for Nam, like the thing that I really like about her uh, is that she's just like obsessed with potions and like I love tea <laughs> as well, Coddle. <laughs> and, uh, I'm probably not like anywhere near as obsessed with tea as Nam is obsessed with potions. <laughs> but uh, every time I kind of like get into character, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to pretend that like the potions are like amazing high quality tea. <laughs> <laughs> anything it takes <laughs> i adore and your method just, acting gotta say <laughs> and she's just absolutely uh ridiculous and uh i don't know I, I mean we all have our ups and downs but you know when when i'm feeling myself and I'm, I'm all like silly and nutty and having a good time playing video games with my friends like that's that's kind of the same energy that i have to channel when i play nom <laughs> so yeah Cross, uh, crossing my fingers for when I record in person. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine, I'm certain. 
Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, Michael, you and Kennedy were together previously on another project. Um, tell me, what made you want to like come back? Like, is it just his ang <laughs> his animal magnetism that that drew you back to this uh, project? It's high. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, I've worked with Kennedy before on a Has Been Hotel, and uh, I got to know him um, specifically from the cast and crew party. Actually, we we hit it off pretty well um, at the night of the premiere. And um, I'm hitting it off, he means yeah. that I I came at him and ranted about sound design for about bombarded me with information <laughs> on sound design <laughs> and talking my ear off. Exactly. Um, at first, I was like, "Stop talking!" <laughs> but as as time went on, uh, you were you're awesome. Like it was a lot of fun. It was a really fun night. And uh, obviously, as as time has gone on, we've gotten to become good friends. And um, you know, you had. Um, Kennedy had uh, an original voice for for the character Strap that was for the proof of concept, but unfortunately they live, um, where do they live, in the Philippines? They live in the Philippines. Yeah. And if I wanted them to come down for the studio, I would have to, like, do all kinds of uh, Visa paperwork, paperwork. And, and payments mm -hmm. and stuff and also pay for his plane ticket and that, I, I love the guy and he's great. We're going to have him somewhere else in the project. Uh, but uh -huh. unfortunately, I, I wouldn't have been able to get him on board with uh, with this. But Michael was such a an obvious. Yeah, Kennedy came and asked me um, to read for the character, which I did. And uh, Kennedy decided that he wanted to have me, and I was more than happy to uh, to be a part of it. I love that. I love that. And Ellerby, I I feel like you were just like he was like I want you. Oh no, he, I was just under my rock in the garden and he just comes <laughs> out with his trowel and he lifts the rock and there I am at my desk and he peeks down and he's like, hey, kid, you want to be in a thing? And I'm like, oh, sure, sir. Can I have tuppence? <laughs> and he said, yes, and here I am. Um, I had that exact accent of like, you want to be a star, kid? You want to be a star? <laughs> I feel like that's how all introverts get like adopted by like Absolutely. their extrovert companions. It's Absolutely. just like, hi, we're friends now. We are going to do things together. You're you are I, now my squishy. I will call you right. squishy. <laughs> you you physically just have to be okay with this because for I'm sure. not accepting no for an answer. Um, uh. <laughs> but tell me, like, so he basically was like, "Yes, do this for me," and you were like, "Sure," but sh there's got to be something that really um, draws you to the character and to the project itself. So tell me about that. Well, Kennedy and I have been friends for a while. I actually met him for the first time this year in June because I was visiting a friend in California. And I was like, should I tell Kennedy I'm in California? I probably should. He's probably busy, but I'm going to tell him I'm in California. Deep, 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 deep. I'm in California. Two seconds passed. Where are you? <laughs> like, like, about like five minutes later, I was at his house. Like, we are doing things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he went to an arcade. As it turns out, he's really, really good at DDR. I am not. <laughs> but um, I haven't I'm played gonna... DDR in so long. I want to, but I feel like I'm going to be trash. I am trash oh at my DDR God. myself. I'm, I'm really bad. <laughs> you never forget. Uh, but yeah, you're good at DDR. Like... If you're good at DDR. Kitty nah, I'm going to be up to like the Tin Man, like. <laughs> Dancing the butterfly. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I, also sequestered, I also sequestered LRB to uh, like an antique store because he is exactly that kind of person that would enjoy an antique store. And I also fed him pie. But... Yes, amazing <laughs> pie. So I was a, I mean... I'm a cheap I'm a date. What can I say? <laughs> but yeah, uh, outside of that, uh, I've always been a fan of, uh, I listened to the old um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy radio plays as a kid. Because like uh -huh. uh, my dad worked at flea markets and my mom was a teacher, so we had no money. So like uh, radio plays on cassette were actually quite a bit part of my childhood. So I always made them in a fan capacity. I used to run like a Doctor Who radio play as a fan show that I hope has been raised from the internet entirely. Uh, oh, but, um, no. but like I've always I done it as a fan that. thing, and here is Kennedy, this professional sound designer man, who's like, "Hey, your stuff's good, kid. I think you're ready for the big leagues." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, oh okay. Uh, keep talking. Yeah." Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like I see your fan base has about 25 followers. How'd you like to be part of a project that's 50 followers? <gasps> you can't even get 75. <laughs> Listen, literally when I got started with Head Nerds in Charge, I had 26 subscribers on YouTube and maybe like 200 followers on Instagram. 
And they were like, we've got 500 followers on Instagram. And I was like, sold. <laughs> Just a uh, fusion hot. <laughs> right. Literally. <laughs> pretty much that. Oh, my God. Um, also, the one thing I found really interesting is that this isn't like, it's not visual media. It's an audio story, yes, which right. I find to be uh, like, I found that to be like super super interesting like because it seemed like audio storytelling was kind of like dying off and now yeah. you have podcast and like yeah, yeah. Uh, bringing back like radio style drama so tell me why'd you guys like go that route versus like maybe like a traditional like animated animation well so the the really fun thing about uh podcast and audio drama is that there is so much imagination that can be portrayed with very little going on um, mm -hmm. If you're uh, funny enough, uh, podcasts have been making a really big push for audio dramas for the last like 10, 20 years, uh, which was spearheaded by uh, Casey Whalen's uh, We're Alive, which is a zombie survival podcast. Fun fact, I also worked on that uh, a little bit, but I, 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 uh, he was my I know Michael said he'd get around, but so do you, sir. <laughs> he, he made uh, he, he was kind of like my mentor, helping me get Magus Elgar off the ground when I first started and was really cool. But what I love about audio dramas is uh, the, the budgetary side also. I could make <laughs> an entire yeah, six-hour series for the same amount of budget that would cost me to make a three-minute animated series. Yes. Like, oh, wow. animation is expensive. And time. Art is um, very expensive. Uh, <laughs> like, you, like, keep in mind... Uh, like one of the projects that I work on, uh, Hell, Hell of a Boss, has like 10, 20 million views per video for an episode. Uh -huh. And they are constantly selling merch to get people to help pay to to run the show it's independently. Expensive. And like, like we're, we're talking like one person's job on that project is like two to $3,000. It yeah. can get really expensive in animation. I mean, yes, Clutch would be fantastic in animation which is why mm -hmm. we have a stretch goal to make an animated pilot for it if we hit a hundred thousand okay. uh, dollars because that's that's the price tag that we'd be having because <laughs> making an animated short like even a small animated short would oh, eclipse yeah. the budget of an audio drama of the whole thing yeah. also uh if, if i may interject another thing about audio only content is i think uh there was a small period where it seemed to die off, like right when like you'd go to the library and find like audiobooks on cassette or whatever. But I think like the second was... YouTube took off, it seemed like yeah, audio yeah. stuff kind of like went by the wayside. But so I'm actually I... really excited. For sure. And I think there's been a resurgence of it mainly because with our current media landscape, people kind of have a need to be entertained even when they're not able to look at something. So like to me, podcasts, audio dramas, radio plays have really nicely filled that niche of like driving to work, doing mm -hmm. laundry, doing dishes. That's always what they did for me. Whenever I wash dishes, I'm listening to like an audio book, a podcast or radio play or whatever. So I think they have a place when like your eyes need to be busy on something else, but otherwise mm -hmm. you'd be bored out of your mind. And I think a lot of people through just looking for something to fill that space are discovering so many lovely stories they wouldn't really discover otherwise. Because you have to write a radio play way differently than you'd write like uh, an animated short or any other kind of thing because you only have sound. So like uh, the kind of stories you tell with that are slightly different than any other thing. So I'm glad that a lot of people are like discovering the love of audio work and sound design and radio plays without that visual element. Because it's a neat, it's a neat medium. I like it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a like bias the... party. <laughs> There's also like the fun uh, side thing, which I discovered entirely by accident, where there's a lot of people who are just like amateur animators or animatic artists that just want to like draw really fun segments of audio only content on there. Hmm. Uh, case in point, uh, I was part of the Honeycast with uh, Michael over here at one point uh, when we were talking about like uh, Hasbin Hotel and as part of a charity event. I wrote a script of like an audio drama between like Alistair and Angel Dust, and people loved it so much that they actually made an animatic of that segment. That's so cool. It's, fan communities are wild; like they're very dedicated, and they um they'll make some weird stuff. <laughs> they'll devote like a lot of time cuts. and energy. Yeah, like yeah. Super cuts of you getting animated, just of you just talking to Ash. <laughs> Yeah, they do a lot of those, and honestly, it's it's always fun. It's always awesome seeing just people be passionate about something and make you know fan content. Fantastic! I love every second of it. Any fan response is just such a wonderful. Oh, thing. for sure. 
Like I got a PO box and like I got this cool microphone. It just showed up. But I'm like, someone out there at total random thinks that I'm worth <laughs> this up, object. Hold that up. Is that an H4N? Yes, it is. You someone just gave you that? Yes, it just showed up. I have up. no idea what I'm looking at, but it, it looks it, it, it's, it's a it's, it's a field it's recorder a, microphone. It's a oh, portable microphone. What? But it's like it's like a six hundred dollar microphone uh, <laughs> thing to record on the go. Like this is the kind of people that podcasters would use like at conventions. Yeah, it's for, really, like, really high. I was just about to say how much does that cost? Because I could have definitely used that interviewing people at conventions trying I'll, to like I'll, I'll, I'll isolate give, out the sound. They're, they're they're really cool. Like well, yeah, they're really high quality. Things. What I ended up using wow. it for uh, is because uh, my parents know that I'm a sound designer, but I haven't really told them I'm like an actor or whatever because you know uh -huh. uh ethnic parents why are you not a doctor blah blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but like um because they know i work in sound design i've somewhat become the family historian so i i usually i used to bring my blue yeti over to grandma's house and like ask her questions for two hours and then like put it on the shelf uh but recently i've had to interview the newer generations and they're always on the move but i'm like ha ha you can't you can't escape me now i can run you down <laughs> i will get your story for the record <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, now all you have to do is get one of these babies oh my god, ready to go. <laughs> oh goodness that looks like uh the pill mr krabs takes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come through spongebob reference <laughs> there's always there's always timely there's always one that you can make there's oh my i swear there's a doctor who and like a Star Trek and a SpongeBob oh, I love Doctor for Who. everything. I, I love <laughs> Doctor Who. When you said you did like a Doctor Who drama, yeah, I'm like, is it still out no. there? Can I watch it even if it's bad? <laughs> it, it, I used I used all the music from the actual show in the radio play, so in the purge, uh, it was lost in the annals. But I ran the Doctor Who club at my university for three years. <laughs> And like I, I've, I've eaten the fish fingers and the custard. I've had the jelly babies and I've worn the scarves. I am a dork. That is violently nerdy and I adore it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joanna, I feel like you're the only person, you're the only like new person really here. So like in this group anyway. So like, are you, how is it working with everyone? And have you done any projects like this in the past? I'm going to be totally honest uh i've never been a part of a project that's been this successful so yeah it's definitely is the first time for everything come through this is the first of many first of many <laughs> <laughs> the road of a yeah i mean it's, <laughs> yeah it's just absolutely surreal um it still hasn't really settled in yet to be honest so <laughs> yeah Oh, one of us. Yet. One of us. <laughs> oh, listen, I like I said, I am in love with this project. I'm I I feel like almost like I'm like your core audience. I got a kid who would love <laughs> stuff like this. I am constantly well before my car broke down, but I am constantly in my car. Um, I love audio type stuff. Like we go on road trips for the show all the time so like this would be right up my alley so tell me about the kickstarter itself um like what are your tiers and what are like some of the rewards um that people get for um backing your project yeah sure okay so uh clutch of cobalt story is a somewhat of a spin-off of another series that i've made called magus elgar which it takes place in the same universe but many years in the past so you don't need to know anything about magus elgar to enjoy clutch a cobalt story um mm -hmm. we're planning on making six episodes uh, the reason for this is that uh, i didn't really have a lot of confidence uh to uh make a really big massive audio drama right out the gate uh so i wanted to kind of like test the waters a little bit to see if people would actually be interested in a, in a thing like this but if you do s decide to support us um we are planning on releasing clutch a cobalt story completely free when we're all completely done with everything but uh, if you want to support us, you can get early access to the episodes. Uh, you'll also get uh, special voice acted segments from uh, each of our kobolds that you can use for like voicemail messages or text messages. 
uh, or prank calls. We're not going to judge on that. Uh, we also have a couple of physical backer, uh, physical rewards, like um, US, a USB stick with like the, the clan insignia on it that'll have the entire series, the soundtrack, and behind-the-scenes featurettes a little bit with whatever we can fit on there. Um, we have uh, one of our tiers, uh, Cobalt, I believe it's Cobalt Elder, uh, you can have the opportunity to learn how to uh, create your own audio dramas with me, where I will give you like a, a several hour like lesson about creating audio dramas that you can make with very little uh, in, in your studio. Like if you if you only have like a microphone and a laptop, you can make audio dramas, and I can teach you how, as well as like you know fun sound design thingies. Um, we have a really big tier uh, called uh, the Dragon Tier, where uh, for a exorbitant amount of money, you will get the opportunity to have us create a advertisement of whatever you like with our kobolds. Like, they'll actually, uh, if you just give us the premise of what you want us to write about or talk about, we'll make like a, a comedy sketch in the middle of an episode with our kobolds acting it out for you to advertise whatever it is that you want to talk about or even just make a sketch of your preference um right now we have a bunch of stretch goals as of as of recording this um if we manage to hit thirty thousand, we'll be able to create um two uh shorts in addition to the six episodes uh and unlock these collector enamel pins made by wizard pins of uh strap mm -hmm. Nam book and Gaujin for the Crimson. Um, right now, uh, we had an early, we kind of had like an early bird uh, backer offer where you can actually get like the pin of Strap the Trap Maker. But once we hit uh, the thirty thousand, we'll be able to open up the rest of those pins of like Nam book and and Gaujin for that you can get your hands on. Uh, you'll also get uh, if you back any of our our more like monetary tiers, you'll be able to get a. Uh, a one month free subscription to the fantasy network, which is a, uh, a group uh, that is a subscription service of like lots of like wonderful nerdy movies and audio dramas and premium content. These are the people that made darkness rising and dark and dark dungeons. Uh, they are phenomenally talented and uh, they're, they are helping support us uh, with this project. Um, if we end up hitting uh, much higher tiers, we'll be able to make more episodes. So we actually have it set up where we can have up to ten episodes of Clutch a Cobalt Story in, instead uh -huh. of just six. But we would need a lot of support to make that a reality. Um, yes, listen, and at Head Nerds and Charles, we are all about helping to bring like the underserved content creators and curators in this geek space a platform so you guys already know what you need to do head on over to their kickstarter and make sure you back that thing people because i love weird and wild and really cool stuff and i feel like this is one of those things that um, I, uh, it's not just like, I know we do a lot of adult content here, but this is like for a little bit of everybody. Like I would listen to this probably like on independent of <laughs> my <laughs> child, just <laughs> me on my way to work. Like, it's like, Ooh, I'm gonna pop this on and listen to this next episode. So I, I think know, this is like, we, um, <laughs> right? no, like what's not to like, they're freaking adorable. Oh my God. Let me pull this picture back up. Cause they're so cute. And I just like, please. <laughs> like what is not, what is we, not to like about this? We meant Clutch to be, like, for all ages, uh, much like with uh, Magus Eldar. Uh, there's actually a, a, a podcasting service called Pinna for little kids to, like, be exposed to audio dramas and podcasts for the first time. Uh, mm -hmm. And Magus Eldar was hosted on there for for parents who want their children to have a wonderful screen-free entertainment experience. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. I grew up on televisions and video ga videos games, so I don't, I don't, I, I don't mind. But a lot of parents want to have like a good screen-free experience for for kids, and I don't want to exclude them from the entertainment of having a wonderful time with a bunch of kobolds in an audio ex uh, experience. Okay, listen, yeah. I'm I am a proponent of scare your children. Um, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I am also one of those people. <laughs> Scare your kids, people. It'll be Frightened. healthy for them. They will grow I up healthy here in their by hearts. Don Blue. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, they grow 
grow up with like healthy fear. This way they know what stuff to be afraid of and what stuff they don't grow up being adults like, that are afraid of everything. These <laughs> kids are growing up with like over the garden wall. The kids are going to be all right. <laughs> listen, listen, I watch my dad had us watching wildly inappropriate stuff and I'm just like, but listen, I call myself smart prey. I'm like, you're not just going to kidnap me out here. No, healthy no. fear. You got to work for fear. it. Yes, but they, you don't need to be afraid because this project is awesome and it looks really great for all ages. Um, tell everybody, again, I'm going to put the link up here. And we're also, when we do uh, post this, I'm going to make sure that we post the link for it as well when it goes up on our website and on our Facebook page. But tell everybody where they can follow you guys because you guys are amazing talent and you deserve more than 75 followers, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and you too can become a kobold friend. Yes. I didn't pronounce that wrong. It is F R E N. Uh, we we have a, a kobold in charge of the Kickstarter. Bark the Kickstarter kobold, and he oh. came up with the hashtag. And I don't yes. think he word good. Oh, come to think of it, if you want to follow the Clutch Kobolds uh, Twitter, you can find us at uh, Clutch Kobolds with a Z on Twitter, and you can follow all of the updates for the Kickstarter on that particular bit of social media. We also have a lot of fan art and uh, pictures that come up every now and again. Sometimes the kobolds jump on and like make commentary. Like at one point, Nam went on to uh, it's a clutch kobolds, like a K O B O L D Z. Ah, D Z. It happens. <laughs> uh, it, I'm if, uh, we we actually had a moment on the co on the uh, kobolds Twitter where Nam was reviewing drinks, <laughs> oh. and. That was fun. Book was like reviewing like the best uh, dragons. Dragons. <laughs> uh, we had like a we had like a bit where like they were doing a live tweet of uh, of Galgenvor's birthday, and that did not go well. <laughs> no, it did. <laughs> oh. um, beyond that, you can find me at C A U D L E W A G. <laughs> Coddlewag at G uh, not at gmail dot com <laughs> at Coddlewag on Twitter. Uh, I tweet about generally, I just gush about things. I'm a very enthusiastic person. <laughs> okay. And Joanna, where can everybody follow you? So, um, honestly, I'm Should not you want too... to be followed. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> you can while it's up. Um, uh, I'm not too big on social media, not gonna lie, but I am on Twitter. And if I remember correctly, I think it's Joanna Voices. It's at Joanna Voices. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ma and Michael's you, Michael? got more of a has eclipsed like all of our followers. <laughs> by, you didn't uh, have to call me out, amount. Kennedy. You didn't have to call me out like this. Uh, but if anybody wants to find me on Twitter, it is at Kovox. K O V O X. I got a very short username. I was able to luck out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Listen, and and you, Kennedy. Oh yeah, uh, you can find me at uh, Ma at uh, Magus Serling. Uh, if you find me on Twitter or Instagram or, or Facebook, uh, Magus Serling is the name of a character that I play in Magus Elgar, who teaches you about magic. Um, and you'll be able to see a lot of like behind the scenes features about sound design. You'll be able to see little clips about has been hotel or hell of a boss or whatever sound design project I'm working on at any given point, or even just like fun things about sound effects. Cause I, I am a single minded, uh, dork about that kind of thing. Um, you could also see, uh, clutch at uh, Clutch Kobolds, or you can see uh, the parent series of Clutch Kobolds at Magus Elgar. That's M-A-G-U-S-E-L-G-A-R. Uh, you can actually see a full 11 episode series right now. Uh, we were nominated for Best Original Work by the Audio Publishers Association, and we've been given Dope. a ton of accolades uh, for that show. It's it's only 11 episodes, so it's it's not a very long watch. Uh, but if, if Clutch of Cobalt Story does very well, we'll be able to work on making a second season of that show. Uh, and if you wanted to see like my professional work, which is basically mostly this, uh, you can go to my personal website, which is kennedyphillips.org. That's Kennedy like the president, Phillips like the screwdriver, dot org. <laughs> That's a good to remember that. Yeah, oh my god, no, this has been so much fun, and like I said, you guys, we are all about the proliferation and promotion of, like, POC and some non-POC works here, like, I think this is a really great 
um this is a really great project like once again make sure you look up clutch a kobold story over on kickstarter and you back this project you guys i tell I tell you guys every week that if you want to see different kinds of media if you want to be better represented you have to show up most likely with your dollars be help be the change that you want to see out there make sure you guys follow them uh clutch kobolds on twitter so that you can keep up with the project as well and you can get um, more updates and see some of those great extras they have there as always you guys i have been at teffy wonder you can follow me over on my instagram or um, at teffy wonder or on my facebook fan page teffy wonder the mocha mermaid um you can make sure you keep up with head nose in charge just google us baby we head nose in charge everywhere we're the number one search result when you put us up head nose in charge.com pick up some of our great merch uh follow us on our subscribe on our youtube follow us on twitter we are head nerds in charge we go live on twitch facebook and youtube wednesdays eight ish to ten ish because you know <laughs> cpt yeah. time is a real thing also we, if you're watching this on youtube like and subscribe also comment it's good for the algorithm ah those things <laughs> make sure you like subscribe and share hashtag tell your friends about us baby um and i will see you guys wednesday nights later